guys, it's Pastor Inez. Welcome to Kids Church Online. I'm so excited that you're here with me today. If you have never joined us for a Kids Church Online, I want to say hello, welcome, and thank you for joining us. We love new friends at TCC Kids. Yay! We also love birthdays and celebrating birthdays. If you celebrated a birthday this past week, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. Happy birthday! We have three rules here at Kids Church. Rule number one is no talking when someone is up front talking to you. Or in this case, no talking when someone is on the screen talking to you. We really want you to hear what God's word says. So we want you to get rid of any distractions that would take your attention away from his word today. Rule number two is super important if you're watching with siblings. Keep your hands to yourself. No kicking, hitting, fighting, biting, choking, or poking. And rule number three is the greatest rule ever. Do you know what it is? Right, it's have fun. Yay! We are going to have fun today, and we're going to start off by playing a game. What would you rather have? We asked 100 kids to choose between two things. Let's see if you can guess what they chose. If you think more kids picked the first choice, you'll stand up. If you think they went with the second, then you'll sit down. But don't lean back in your chair because, well, you know. A new bicycle or a new electric guitar? What do you think most kids chose? Stand up for the bike, sit down for the guitar. Sixty-one percent of kids said they would rather rock out. A limousine or an airplane? What would you rather have? Stand up for the limousine, sit down for the airplane. Sixty-eight percent of kids said they would rather have the airplane. A million dollars or a million kisses from my Aunt Bertha. Stand up for the money, sit down for the kisses. Ninety-nine percent of kids said they'd rather take the cash. A hamburger or pizza? What would you choose? Stand up for the burger, sit down for the pizza. Fifty-two percent of kids said they'd rather have pizza. A baby kitten or a little baby puppy? Stand up for the kitten, sit down for the puppy. Sixty percent of kids said they'd much rather have a puppy. Thanks for playing What Would You Rather Have. Till next time. Well, now we're going to jump into our lesson. So let's go to Miss Janet and see what she has to say today. Hi, TCC kids. Today we are learning that we need to train our emotions. We need to train ourselves on how to react when we are feeling angry or mad or upset. All of those things are really big feelings and they can be overwhelming. So we need to have a plan. I want you to think about animals. I want you to think about how they can be trained to do some really cool things. Maybe you've seen a bird that knows how to talk 
or maybe you've seen a dog that can shake a hand. Those are really cool things to watch because in order to make them happen, that animal had to be trained. The owner had to put in the effort and the time and the animal had to practice over and over again in order to accomplish those goals. Another example is a horse. A horse has reins that the owner can use to train it to do different things. You can pull the reins to lead the horse, or if you're riding the horse, you can pull on the reins in different directions so that the horse knows which way to go. And all of those things require training with the owner and with the horse. And just like those animals needed training to do those really cool things, we need to train ourselves on what to do when we are feeling angry. I'm gonna give you one thing that I would like you to try. Next time you're feeling angry or mad, you don't have a leash to pull on, you don't have reins to pull on, so pull out the Bible. Or think in your head about a memory verse that we've learned. Or just think about Jesus and what he wants us to do. And as you start to do those things, and as you train yourself to turn to God when you are angry, you are going to help yourself make better choices. And you're not going to let your anger get you into trouble. It is okay to feel different feelings, but it's not okay to let them make you make a bad choice. And so I want you to think about starting to train yourself and starting to put in some time and energy so that you can be doing everything God wants you to do and you don't let anger get out of control. Bye everyone. From the time you were really young, you have had emotions, happiness, sadness, anger, which is what we're talking about today. And as you got older, those emotions didn't go away, did they? Maybe you've learned how to manage them better, but you still experience those emotions. Well, guess what? So do I. Even adults experience emotions like sadness and anger. The thing is, our emotions are never going to go away. But as we get older and as we grow, we can learn how to train our emotions. It's kind of like those series, if you guys have ever seen them, How to Train Your Dragon, especially when we talk about anger, because when we get mad, it's almost like we're breathing fire. And that's really not a good thing because that can hurt people. It can hurt us and it can hurt others. It's really important that we learn how to train our emotions. And like we're talking about today, that we learn how to train our anger. We're going to read a passage of scripture. It's found in Exodus 17 verses 1 through 7. The Israelites used to be in Egypt, and when they were in Egypt, they were slaves. But God delivered them from slavery, and now he was leading them to a new land, to the promised land. The Bible says that it was flowing with milk and honey. That sounds pretty awesome, right? So as they're going there, you know what happened? They started complaining. You would think that they would be really happy. They weren't slaves anymore, and they're going to this new land, but it took a while, and so they started whining and complaining, and now they're crying because they don't have water. Now, water is important, don't get me wrong, but I just have to wonder, after everything that God did for them, did they really think that God was going to let them die of thirst in the wilderness? I don't think so, but still, they didn't have the best attitudes. Here's the part I want you to focus on, though. I want you to focus on what God did. God told Moses, who was leading them, he said, take your staff and hit the rock. And then what happened? Water gushed out of the rock. God provided for them. You guys, I believe that God was going to provide for them anyway before they complained. And you know, the truth is God could have punished them for complaining and not trusting him. He could have not provided them with water. He showed mercy on them. You guys, I think this is a really important point for us to remember, especially when we're experiencing an emotion like anger. Usually when we experience anger, it's because somebody has done something wrong to us. 
They've disappointed us. They've hurt us in some way. And it makes us feel really angry. We feel like maybe we didn't get something that we deserve. Maybe that's how the Israelites felt. Maybe they felt like God had wronged them and that he wasn't giving them what they deserved, water. But God was providing for them. And he continued to provide for them even when they complained. He still provided everything that they needed. He showed mercy to them. So when you are experiencing anger, I think it's a really good idea to step back and think about all of the good things that God has done for you. It's okay to feel angry, it really is. We all experience that sometimes, but what's not okay is for us to become fire-breathing dragons and hurt everybody in our path. So when you're angry, take a step back. And you know, some people say count to 10. I think it's a good idea to count 10 things that God has done for you or 10 things that make God a really good God. Instead of focusing on our anger and how we've been wronged and why we're upset, we can focus on God's goodness and God's mercy to us. And with God's help, we can learn how to train our anger. Well, that's all we have for today. I hope that you remember this. I hope you remember to focus on God's mercy when you feel all of that anger coming up inside of you, that you can focus on the goodness of God and ask him to help you to train your anger. I'll see you guys next week as we continue to talk about how to train our emotions. Bye.